so welcome everyone. Uh, for the next session, we will have uh, Kevin Learn uh, to present us uh, with a topic Time Safe REST API with HES. Uh, Kevin has been, like, again, uh, a long time contributor to the HES community, and then uh, he also uh, did a uh, HES workshop for the last two years, I think, uh, with me uh, in the conference. So you may recognize him. Uh, let me pass the mic to Kevin. Uh, hello everybody. Um, actually, I'm not very long time tech user. So I've used tech since like 2015, so it's about three or four years from now. Uh, today, my topic is about a type safe REST API with Hex, and I would like to know if anyone knows what REST is. Yep. So um, it's I, I find it a bit hard to um, explain what REST is. So I'll try my best and. First, I will have a very brief introduction about um, HEX and then REST. So HEX, um, already um, introduced by Jason, which is a very good talk, um, is a strictly type programming language. And it supports multiple targets. And currently, all the targets are listed as the icons on the corner. So there are C++, there are um, um, Python, Lua, um, PHP, C Sharp, and JavaScript. And what's good with um, Hex is um, it output readable and optimized output. So um, if you have attended uh, Jason's um, talk, you have just saw what JavaScript output it puts out. It's really, really, really clean and readable. And meta programming, and I'm not going to talk into very deep as um, Jason did. And it, the compiler is really, really, really fast. And just a, just a little comparison that um, recently I found on the web is that um, here are the compilation times for various JavaScript compilers. Uh, there are TypeScript, Hex, Dart, Dart2, and um, WebAssembly. And you can see the compilation time for Hex is like magnitude, orders of magnitude faster than other compilers. So this is one of the reasons I like Hex. And, oops. and another quick point about this one is about Hex is it is oops, oops. It's open source. So you don't have to be bound to um, proprietary technologies, which may die anytime. Just think about Flash. If anyone knows Flash is going to die in 2020. So because it's proprietary and then no one can do anything with it. So here is um, the use case for myself, what I use Hex for. I am a freelancer, so I work at home and I just work almost anything um, as a full stack developer. So I do API servers, I do web apps, I do mobile apps, and sometimes I write games. And Hex could be used for writing command line tools as well. So, just a brief introduction of what I've done so far. This is a web app example that I made for a IoT product. So it is a smart um, safety helmet for construction workers. And the company is actually in Science Park, so I will come to Science Park every week, actually. And this is um, an app fully written in Hex. And surely I do use a lot of JavaScript libraries with NPM and, and such. And the backend is also written in Hex, um, which use a framework that I'm going to talk about just a moment later. And this one is a mobile app, which I'm still working on. And it is in an alpha testing stage, so it is not public yet. But I hope it is going to be released in the, in the next month or so. And it is written in Hex again. And it used React Native. And yeah, and the back end is Hex again. So it is pretty nice. So for games, 
this is one game I wrote for the ACG Hong Kong, which is a um, game exhibition. Anyway, yeah. I, maybe some of you have gone there, and maybe you have seen this game before. And this is a game for for the booth to for the visitors to play, and if they got enough points, they will get a souvenir or, or such. And this is recent in hacks again. So, yep, this is a very brief introduction for for my work. And so, what is REST? I tried to um, give a very brief introduction to REST because somehow it, I found it a bit hard to explain what REST is. So it is an architecture style based on HTTP. And it uses all the HTTP verbs to map them into actions of your backend server. So there are get, post, put, patch, and delete, and some other, something else. And in the REST architecture, it tries to um, put all the resource identification in requests. So if you are going to get a user from the database or anything, you are going to write something like this. Get users, and then the ID is um, embedded into the URL. And REST APIs are usually stateless. So you can use them in cloud or distributed servers. Stateless means that uh, one request doesn't depend on another request in the past. All the information needed is, um, is included in the request itself. So there's an example. This is the GitHub API, which looks like this. Maybe it's too small, but barely we can see it. So, there is a request to list, this is, this is an API to list all the GIST forms. And the uh, URL or the request would be like this, get git and slash the GIST ID and then slash forks. So it means in the GIST collection, I'm going to grab this ID of GIST. And within that GIST, I'm going to grab all the forks. And the result would be like, a JSON object of an array with all the information of a fork inside it. Okay, so we know what REST is, and there are some existing solutions for building REST API. So for Node.js, there are Express.js, and anyone use it? Yeah. I never actually write a complete solution in Express because I don't really like it is too strangely tight. So everything is string in JavaScript. So um, because as Jason has already talked about it, and Hex is a better JavaScript, so I have been using Hex from the very beginning for all my personal professional jobs. And there are screen for Java. Um, that is actually pretty similar to the hex solution I'm going to introduce. But um, personally, I don't really like Java. I'm just this just a very personal preference. And there are PHP and C sharp, and I have no idea how do they write um, REST APIs. So. Sorry about that. I didn't do enough research on this topic as Jason did. So let me just go right into the introduction of how we do that in Hex. We are going to use a library called Tinkerbell Web. And the link is, uh, and this is post on GitHub with the uh, name hextink slash tinkweb. So it is a library that strives to embed the semantics of REST and HTTP into Hex in a seamless way. <clears throat> and here is a documentation site for the library. Okay, let me talk about how it is going to handle the REST API. First, 
that will be a HTTP request coming into your server. And then take web will just um, grab it and then pass the header, which includes the HTTP method and the URL, and among other amongst other headers fields in it. And with this information, it is enough to do things for the next part. Also, okay. It will also pass the HTTP request body if needed. It will prepare a section. <coughs> a section is like a login uh, to identify who is actually issuing that request. So usually this will result in a some kind of user identification in your in your application. And then with this all prepared, think where we call your function. And as a developer, you only have to care about this part actually. Is to write your own code to um, handle the request. After that, take where will and code the result for you and then send it back to the to the client. Yeah. So here I'm going to introduce how the TankWeb framework actually works with some examples. First of all, it uses field signatures and metadata to, um, to define the, the routes. So it's going to use this kind of metadata. This um, add colon get thing is a syntax in hex. So the actual code looks like this one. You will have like a get at this path, so it is a it is at a root like just a slash, and you can also have another path for this function. And if you don't specify a path explicitly, it would use the field name. So in this case, it is going to be slash version. For this, for this route. And you can also do some, some routing. So <clears throat> with this sub, TakeWeb will route all the requests starting with users, so basically this S here to be, to the user's API. So when we come to parameters, so you know, on REST API there are few kinds of parameters. So one of them is the path parameters. So that is going to be specified in the path with a dollar sign. And let me just give you an example. So when we define a route that looks like this, slash hello, slash dollar sign name, and this name is going to be a variable, going to be a parameter to be specified in the in the URL. And you can, as a developer, you can use it in your function by <coughs> um, capturing it in your function argument. <coughs> Second part is um, query parameters. So there is a special query argument for your function. So if you have a function argument named query, <coughs> and then the fields inside this object is going to be part of the query parameters. So an example would be, um, yeah, articles, and then there's a question mark here, and language equals to English. You can also use um, a special body argument for the body parameters, and TankWeb will try to parse the body according to um, what you are, are expecting. So by default, it will pass the body as a JSON object. So if this is a request with a JSON content, is a string of foo, and then you will get foo in your function argument, and uh, in your function. So um, the last way to do that is uh, using a params metadata, which tries to map your function arguments into the HTTP request. 
So in your function, you define ID is an integer and region is a string. You can map ID into the QV parameter and map region in the body parameter. So you will see the example request is that there is an ID in the QV and then in the body it is adjacent with a key region. Okay, when it comes to a body parameters, so the body is a, actually is a, the context, any context to be um, appended to an HTTP request. And take web will try to pass the contact the body with JSON. So it's like this, it will be ID and name. Also, you can instruct take web to pass the body as a uh, form URL encoded format. So it's like this. It's a typical um, URL style parameters. So in this case, everything is uh, fully type safe. So if there are any errors or there are any mismatch in types, um, you get an error so you can handle them uh, nicely. For example, if if we are expecting a body like this, so there's an ID of integer and then this name of string. If the actual request body looks like this, you will get a error for the ID field because hex or thing web is expecting to have an integer, and this letter a is a string and this is not an integer. Or even if it is a one inside. This is number inside the string, it's not going to work either because it is a string. And take is going to expect expecting a integer there. And it will also complain for the missing name uh, parameter because it is missing and um, take web is expecting it inside the request. <coughs> As for return values, the mechanism is similar. Um, you can define or you can instruct Tink Web to, um, to act according to the uh, negotiation of the HTTP request. Because in the request, there may be headers um, telling you that the client is going to accept JSON as a result or it's going to accept other formats as a result. And Tink Web will try to encode <coughs> according to such header or such instructions. And it supports asynchronous um, actions. So it's good for guys who use um, Node.js or yeah, Node.js. <coughs> and yeah, raw, raw files are okay. You can just stream whatever <coughs> binary data download wire to the client. <coughs> Alright, and here it comes to access control. All of the uh, all of the API require requires some kind of access control so that you cannot, as an as Kevin, you cannot access maybe Andy's data. So there will be some kind of access control mechanisms in Tank Web. There is a first there is a restrict metadata, which looks like this. If we, we define this function to be restricted to this expression, so think where we try to run this user is admin function before think, so that if it is um, if it finds out this user is actually an, as a, is a admin, then it will run this function get settings. Otherwise, it will uh, return a forbidden error back to the client directly. So you don't even know, you don't even have to handle this all kind of um, complex um, uh, logic. How do we um, get a user that is um, in the flow part I've mentioned that there is a um, section that take web would pass, would prepare a section. And a section could be anything. So in this example, I will just um, 
inspect the header and find out what the authorization header is and try to pass the header and get an ID from it. So it can be, you can then query the database or you can embed all the information in your uh, header so that just make sure you know who is issuing that request. And then you'll be able to create a user which has a, this ace admin function and then in turn you can use it in the restrict metadata. Also you can use a special user argument that is going to give you the user in that section. If there is no user or if there are any failure, so, so in this case if there are no authorization header and it is going to return no users. So in that case, think where we return um, an unauthorized response to the, to the client. So this is a very brief introduction of this, all these um, mechanisms. There are more advanced ways to do more advanced things. Okay, so far I have, um, have a brief introduction on the server-side API. And here comes where Hex really shines. Remember that um, Hex has multiple targets. And we can compile. OK, 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 just, just now. We just talk about how TechWeb is going to work on client side. <coughs> on client side, we call it remote tech. So on client side, we are going to write type safe function calls. This is like a remote procedural calls on PC. And it hides all the HTTP details from, from you. In a moment, I will show some demo code. And because it is hacked, it's going to, um, you can just compile your code in all the support targets, and then the remote calls just works. So here is a client's example for how the code is going to be written. So there is our um, API definition, which is uh, just something we have discussed just now. And here is the client code. So this is um, actually server-side code, but it could also be reused in client-side because it's just an interface, and the, the client code will reference this interface here, you see remote roots. This is type parameters to instruct TakeWeb to build a client side framework, SDK, or something like that for you. So, after that, when you use this remote, you are going to like calling a function remote.create user, and then you provide the name and then the region, and then Behind the scene, ThinkWeb is going to transform all these things into a shooting request and then send it to the server and the server returns and then ThinkWeb is going to parse it. Everything is type safe. So in, the, in between, if there are any type errors, uh, the framework will tell you and you can handle it. <coughs> so when the results come back, you can handle it, like registering a callback function here. If it is a success, you will get a user object as promised by this API definition. So whatever the user object is, you will get that. And yeah. So this um, dollar type is a keyword in the hex language which will print the type of that expression. So in this case it's going to give you a user type. If there are any error so maybe the server is down, or maybe the server is not returning something, well, returning something unexpected, then you will get an error. You can handle it nicely here. So yeah, behind the scene, um, ThinkWeb is going to transform your function call into some HTTP request that looks like this one. So what's the benefit with this all hex-based REST API? 
it's type safe because the compiler check things for you. So it's similar to what Jason said, it's a compiler driven mm, development. So when I have to revamp or refactor all my code, I just change one part of it and then the compiler will complain. And then when I make, then make another change and until I make the compiler happy, then when the compiler is happy, then most likely my code is working. And then I can, surely I can write tests for them later on. Um, yeah, code completion because it's all type safe, all um, strictly tied by the compiler. The compiler knows your API structure, knows all the types, all the arguments, so it can provide code completion for you. Um, it's reflection free because TankWeb utilizes macros to um, to transform or to inspect all the types and then prepare all the relevant codes like encoding, decoding, and it's all reflection free, it's all compound time done, and so it is minify friendly, so you can use closures in the fast mode, and you can use whatever. And mm -hmm. so, and it is cross-platform because you can reuse code, the paradigm, or the libraries or all your skills in every aspect. So it's like me, I do all full stack developing. So I do back ends, front end, games, all in one language. And I can reuse all my skills, reuse all my libraries, reuse all the paradigms or whatever. In everywhere, in all my daily jobs. Yeah, so you can share code between platforms to reduce cost. So it's like me, I can so far, I, I'm a one-man band. I work on all the backends, frontends, and games, whatever, with myself. And because of hacks, I can just share code, and then I can improve my increase my uh, productivity quite drastically. Just imagine if I have to write a server in like PHP, and then I have to write a uh, web app in JavaScript, and then I have to write a app iOS app in Swift, and I have to write an Android app in Java, then I'm going to, I don't have that much of time actually. But with hacks, I can do it all by myself. So, do we have time for a demo? How much? Uh, we, don't, we don't have any sessions afterwards. Okay, so yeah, okay, okay. okay. So, it's a very, very quick demo for how tech web actually works. This is a code for the server. So in, I'm going to have a container. A container is just like server, which is I'm going to target Node.js, so I will use a Node container on the port 8002. And I create a root. What is root? Root is actually the actual API here. So class root with a get API with a sub-routing API. So it's just what I have already mentioned before. And, yep. and then we just um, run it. And then let me just start the server. So I will have to compile it. And then I will run it. Just like this, and then the server is already running. So it is it is waiting for request. And on the client side, I am going to <coughs> write this code. This is a bare minimum code that has to be written to for the Tango Web client side to work. So I will create a remote. A remote is a class type that is going to take what your API definition is as a type parameter here. So root is our API definition again. It is reused in the client side as well as in the server side. And right on different platforms. So we have Node.js, we have JS, and so this browser JS actually. And we have some so-called sys sys system targets. So like C++, PHP, or C, C sharp, the kind of system platforms. We will have this different 
client. This is this are actually HTTP client implementation for each of the platforms. But let just forget it. it's just some details. And we will define an endpoint because my server is listening on 8002 port. So I will just use this host as a target. After that, my code is ready for writing all the actual remote calls. So here, if I type remote, and then it's going to tell me that there are what functions are there. So there are users, and users you can do whatever, you can create a user with a name, and then you can grab a user with an ID. So it's all strictly typed because the compiler know, knows what the type is. It's getting, it's expecting ID integer as an argument. So, so the code is actually here. I will grab the current time because actually now it's going to return the current time as a string. And the next, I will create a user. And then after that, I will take the return value, which contains an ID, and then grab the user again, and then print it out. So let me just show you how to do that. So I've prepared few targets for you to taste what Hex can do. First of all, I will compile once for the Node.js platform. Once it's compiled, then I can run it. you can see it is uh, running this now function, but somehow maybe there was something wrong with it. I don't know. Okay, let's try another target. Uh, maybe maybe C++ target. So actually it is, when I do compile this um, different, it is going to compile the same piece of code with different targets. And because it's C++, blah. Oops. What's wrong? This is pretty nasty. I don't know. Maybe there was some bug with my phone. Well, I was tested it yesterday and it works. <laughs> I don't know. So, 60% of the time it works all the time. Oh, let's try another target. I don't know. There was something wrong with myself, maybe. Maybe I messed something up last night. I don't know. So we can compile PHP for, for the same code again. And let's try if it works. So the output of hex for the PHP target will be there will be an entry point called index of PHP. So we're going to run that. Oops, this one works nicely. And so you can see, so you can see, so you can see that um, the code actually um, <coughs> actually runs, actually runs. And so first, it runs the now function API to grab the current time. And then it creates a user, and so that we will get the user ID here, so as printed here. And then with that user ID one, I try to ask the server to give me the user data. So I get it, and then I print it out again. So here is the name, Kevin, for user ID one. So this is supposed to work for, for all the platforms supported by Hex, but also how many are messed up this uh, setup. <coughs> Because mostly, uh, currently, I use the JavaScript um, target mostly. Uh, 
I don't really do much with other targets yet, but it could be useful one time when I need to write some other code for maybe C++ or anything. Yep. Yeah, what was So, yes, basically it is it, but there are a little bonus for this topic because I've been talking about backend APIs and so far. And actually, I would like to introduce there is a pretty new um, UI framework for Hex, which is called Coconut. It is a UI framework that is pretty similar to React and MobX, if you know what is MobX. If you don't, just think about Relax. And Yep, and it we have HX days, so it is like JSX. So the, the, the actual code is like this. Um, if you remember, there is a mobile app I demonstrated, and this is the actual code that comes from that project. So there are some attributes, this is just like props in React, and there are states, which is like state in React. So, and then there is a render function that's going to render some. HTML here. And yeah, that's, that's all. And then I do have some remote calls here, which is just like what I demonstrated just now. It's exactly the same thing. So I have a yeah, server running with ThinkWeb, and I have a front end app also running with ThinkWeb. So they really, really work. And that's all. And any questions for me? And the QR code is for, for the presentation. This one, this presentation. So, just feel free to come to me if you have any questions. I want to ask about, uh, you, you try to demonstrate the time side being compiled to different uh, targets. What about the bad, uh, the bad hand side? Can you like, deploy to like, HP or Python? Yes, um, so far the tank web backend supports Node.js and PHP, I suppose. Uh -huh. um, I think I have one software in the draft. Oh, at time. Thank you. Yeah. But that's why it's over, uh, because mostly because of the And you had to go and running it on the servers with like AWS Lambda? Oh yes, I do. I, actually, my apps are running on AWS Lambda. And oh, I really? need the serverless to deploy them, actually. Yeah. Ah. Yes. Cool. There is a... I have a couple of projects running on AWS Lambda. Like, actually, the, just those I've demonstrated, the, the screenshots, they are all running on AWS Lambda. Yep. Use the AWS Lambda, so I, I guess you have to use this uh, API gateway or something. Right? Yes, I do use API gateway as a like front end. Part. Is that they have uh, their own configuration format or something that maybe we can generate it from the source code, like for the for all the routes? Well, my, my usage of um, API Gateway is that I just define a wildcard, capture okay. all the requests, ah. and then just pipe it to my server. Okay. So, and then the routing is done on Tinker Okay. Yeah. Yes. So, thank you. So, yeah, that's all the sessions of the next chat. Thanks for coming. Uh, yeah, if you have any question about hats or, or anything, yeah, feel free to discuss with us. Thank you.